Good afternoon. We're here to have our lesson for music in the family school high school. I am glad to be here and I think we'll just get started. Let me figure out how to... There we go. Family school. I want you to look at these pictures and I want you to, uh, to answer the questions in your mind and see if you can understand what's happening in these photographs. What, event, what do the events in these slides have in common? They're all, all musicians, some happy and some are a little more serious. The tuba, this fellow is a tuba player. Use your imagination, you can see him standing that tuba up and using it. Okay, think about what you saw in those slides. Where do you think these events took place? We can see that they're all outdoor musicians. They have a variety of instruments, some old, some new, some, um, some expensive, some not. Hello, Benjamin, nice to see you here. I want you to look at these slides. What period of time do you think these events cover in those slides? So here are some answers, and now you'll get to see these slides again. Here's a one-man band in Florida, in the United States. Um, probably five, but... Let's see. Yes, we do. Here's classical street musicians in the yes. Czech Republic. Of course it would, Julia. You can see they're classical. Looks like got a flute and an accordion um, and a bass. Do you see way. something on the ground out there in front? Besides his box of music and other supplies, he has a hat sitting in the gutter. Wonder what you think that's for. Okay, sure. Will do. Here's a busker in France. Uh, well, hmm, a busker. Ever heard that uh, word before? Be about, um, we have a little singer here in Paris, France, and a couple <laughs> in Lisbon, Portugal. This actually is not a photograph, as you can see, but it's a painting of some famous uh, musicians, <laughs> street musicians. Here's a man who wears the costume of a medieval man and plays a lute in France. This is 1993, not so long ago, a mother and her little boy. Even where it's cold in Leipzig, Germany, they're still out on the street playing their instruments. This fellow's in Seattle, Washington. I like to imagine he's um, at a tailgate party for some ball game. The pitch here is in Ann Arbor, Michigan. You can see he's got a bucket there and hoping to make a little money. They're all buskers. I don't know if you've ever heard the term busker, but uh, we're going to learn about buskers today. Another name for street musicians. A busker is a, a person or a group of people who play in a public place or do something in a public place for gratuities. That could be food, or it could be money, or sometimes they get nothing. But they're out there performing some kind of a, a entertainment. Why do they busk? We're going to find out today. I'd like you to be thinking about what would their reasons be, and think about what you would do if you decided you were going to do a little busking. I need that slide to change. Okay, that was the slideshow. Hello, Rodney. That's the slideshow oh. from the family school manual. And now here is a slideshow for you all. Here's the vocabulary of busking. 
a busker is a musician. It can be another kind of entertainment as well, but for our purposes today, it will be musicians. Musicians that entertain in public places. Gratuities are money or tips that show appreciation for a performance. Now, a bottler we'll talk about a little bit later. A bottler is a busker's helper. He's in charge of collecting the money. Hello, Nathan. Um, the pitch is a place where the busker performs. We saw in many countries over time in expensive places and not so nice places. Um, always a public place is uh, the best place for a pitch. Buscar is a Spanish word meaning to seek, usually to seek fame and fortune. It could also mean it comes from an Indo-European word that is to win or to conquer. Now, there um let me give you a, a list of other things people can do besides music, although we'll not be, be talking about them. Some of them are acrobatics. We saw that a lot. Gymnasts in China, many, many uh, Chinese, uh, I guess you would almost say they were twist. They would twist their bodies into incredible contortions, and they would do that for money. There's uh, flea circuses. Um, we could say um, balloon twisting, clowning, juggling, mime. Are some of my favorites, sketching or painting, uh, ventriloquism, that's another good one. Gypsies were some of the first forms of uh, busking in the old world. Mariachis in Mexico are brass bands that played on the streets, and the only place I saw, I guess I've seen it in two places. I saw it in Germany on the trains, there were mariachi bands that would come on the train and they would play for you. And if they received gratuities from the people on that car, they'd stay. If they didn't get any money on that car, they'd leave and go to another car. Troubadours is what they call them in France. Old England would be minstrels. And I mean old, Ingr old England. And medicine shows in the United States. I don't know if you've seen movies. Maybe there were some Disney movies where they'd have a... Um, um, a salesman that would come into town and he would have an elixir and it would be a cure-all elixir. It could fix any, anything. And he wanted to sell this elixir, who, which, of course, was snake oil. It wasn't going to fix anyone. <clears throat> but they would often have whiskers there with them because people enjoy the music. And if they relate the music to the elixir, the music makes them feel good. Of course, the elixir will fix all their ills. And they'll buy the elixir a lot faster if there were street musicians along. And so they call them medicine shows. Mm -hmm. we're, hi, Nathan. We're going we're gonna to listen to um, the old Crow Medicine Show, which is a group of uh, bluegrass musicians in a minute. Um, and they got their name of their, their group probably from those old medicine shows, those old buskers of, of former times. Here's Have you ever seen the movie The Music Man? Yes. So he comes into town. Yes. He like music is awesome. We will. He like he does that, except he does it with, you know, that snake oil idea. Yes. In the, in the beginning, he was planning on just taking their money and running away, but at the end of the movie, he you know he changes. But thank heaven, thank heaven, he changes. That is good. You're right. He did come in. He used his powers of persuasion without mm -hmm. music, and then. Music was definitely a big part of the show. The irony in that, Rodney, is that he was not really a musician. Um, yep. Oliver was a great singer, didn't you think? Uh-huh. Yes, he was. And that did add to the show. Now, here's Ketch Sekor. He's the leader of the Old Crow Medicine show that we'll listen to in just a few minutes. He said they like playing for big crowds. And they, they hope that there will be a lot of people come and watch them and maybe even give them a little bit of money to show appreciation. He says it's, it's humble and brave. It takes a lot of courage to do busking or street musician work well. Because some people walk right by. They won't even look at you. They don't give you anything. They don't even notice that you exist. Some people are unkind. They think you're just another guy for a, with his hand out. He says busking can sometimes be a barometer. Um, to gauge what kind of people are in our pla on our planet. Now, I, I think I've walked by a lot of street musicians in my life and not shown any appreciation. But I'll have to tell you, well, in a little while, I'll tell you, I've had experience busking myself on the streets of Nashville. And uh, it was 
it, it helped me see the world from a different point of view. And I will never, never, ever walk by street musicians again the way I've done in the past. I want to be the good on that social barometer. Do you remember we talked earlier this year about Josh Bell, who was, who was one of the foremost violinists in the world. He has a fiddle that's three and a half, four million dollars, a bow that's several hundred thousand dollars, and he's playing one of the hardest pieces Bach ever wrote. And he's here, if you remember, in Washington, D.C. in the metro station. And he, he fiddles, plays his violin for about an hour, and he earns $25, if I remember right, something like that. Now, it is a very humble act to, to, to be a street musician and to re the risk of not having anyone like what you do is great. And so you have to be courageous. That's one very famous busking event. They've written a children's book that I ordered and gotten. It's a very nice little book on that experience. It definitely um, uh, woke a lot of people up to the way we are and how little time we have for what is beautiful and good. Now, let me see. Here is a street musician. Uh, hippies were some of the um, they had, instead of sit-ins, they had be-ins, B-E hyphen I-N. They were a be-in, and they <clears throat> they would get together in public places and play music for each other and do a lot of other things that weren't exactly right. And San Francisco became a place for a lot of street musicians, and that's where I saw my first street musicians was in San Francisco. And I have actually loved it. It wasn't just musicians, so it was – um, other kinds of there, the artists were there and um, the acrobats were there and it, it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. The sun is bright and the weather is beautiful and you have these people out there performing what they do best for free. It's wonderful. It was really wonderful. Christmas caroling is sort of like uh, street musicians or busking if you walk up and down the streets. Uh, some, some busking is done just sitting in one place. It's called a circle a circle event and people circle around you. Now you can be on the street and people don't circle around you. If you are especially entertaining and you, people like what you do, then they may form a circle around you and that causes, calls it a circle show. There are some who go into the intersection while the light is red and then they go up and down cars and try to collect a few more gratuities for that. Um, but here is a little group of carolers that uh, we could call them buskers. Now, I, uh, cafe busking is another kind. That's what I've seen uh, mariachi bands more is in a Spanish restaurant, a Mexican restaurant. And they'll be there like on Friday nights and they'll, they'll serenade you while you're there with your sweetheart eating dinner. And they, they appreciate gratuities as well. And they are fabulous. Oh, they get all guitars of all different sizes or brass instruments of all different contortions. And they are fabulous as well. Now, there are those who cyber busking. Um, I wonder if YouTube videos could be considered cyber busking because they, they, they perform their music in a public place. And some of them actually have a pen pal account where if you like it, you can drop your money in and they can make a little bit of money. I've never met one of those. I've only heard about those. Um, and so we even have our day and age, we would have cyber busking. Now, busking has been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years all over the world, everywhere. And so it's, it's been going on a long time. Now, before I, uh, we answer this question, why busk? There was a book written on uh, street musicians. And part of it is there's no real law. There's not a body of law to regulate busking or street musicians. It's kind of like moral law. <laughs> they just kind of have to behave the way everyone knows they should behave. Don't block pedestrian traffic. Don't stand in front of entrances to, to stores. Don't have loud music after really late at night. Um, there were some public people who thought that uh, street musicians made it so they wondered if people went another way. Uh, they changed their traffic pattern. And so that would affect businesses along a certain street. If there were street musicians, they wondered, do people go another way? And so should we not like busking for that? And does it increase the crime in the streets? And uh, 
they found that, interestingly enough, in this book called Underground Harmonies, Music and Politics in the Subways of New York, she said, the, the author said, music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. Where buskers regularly perform, crime rates go down. They found that people who are more educated like busking. They like street musicians, and they're able to understand them, and, they're, and they um, are more generous with their gratuities. Uh, so some cities have set off areas where they want to, they would actually invite and schedule street musicians to come and perform, hoping to make it a better place. And that's a good thing to know as well. So let's find out why people busk. Here is one. This is Abby the Spoon Lady. And she she is uh, spends a lot of time in Nashville. She does go to other places. This, I think, is in Nashville, North Carolina. But she was on, on Broadway in Nashville when we were down there, the two or three times we were down there. She was on the same street busking while we were down there busking. And I'm going to let you listen to her. And if you walked by her, she doesn't really look up. And she does look like she doesn't get enough to eat <laughs> and lives a hard life. But it is fabulous watching her. So let's listen to Abby the Spoon Lady. That's a bass, isn't it? That's the bass, the old club bass. You got a bass drum there and then a dip right bass right to the side of the guitar player. Now, Abby the Spoon Lady is famous uh, for what she does. She has her own website. She, she's about the only, she's the only, she might, she's one of the very few professional spoon players. Oh, here, hang on a second. Let me see what other music is coming on. There we go. Okay, you can look her up on uh just Google Abby the Spoon Lady and you'll come up with her life. She teaches spoon uh, playing lessons and she has a few bands that she's scheduled to play with. But when we were down there, she would play with whatever band happened to be playing. She walked down the street till she saw a group like this group. I don't know if this is her particular friends or if it's, she even knows them. Um, she just sit down and start playing with whoever it is that's playing music. Uh, that's pretty cool. So she does it for money. That's what she does it for. That's to earn her living. She's a professional spoon player. One reason to busk is for money. The next one is for fame. This is the old show, old, um, uh, the medicine show, old crow medicine show. And they got their start. Now they play inside um, big concert halls all over the world. But they got their start busking in front of others who were already on the big stage. So here they are outside of a big convention in England, and they're just outside. And you'll hear him say, yeah, we got in on the stage because we were outside. And we were doing our best and performing even though we weren't part of the show, but one of the acts didn't show up. So they had an extra a few minutes, and they invited us in on the stage, and that gave them their start. So listen to him explain how they were busking for fame. They wanted to be noticed, and so they just uh, yeah, many, many do it this way. It was a good story, wasn't it? Because you came to the festival, and you weren't originally going to play, were you? No, we were here uh, hanging out with Gillian Welch and David Rollins. We were in support of them over in the U.K., and, yeah. and we just uh, started playing on the street corner in front of the uh, Mojo tent and had them rocking, and, 
And then, as it turned out, the one of the bands couldn't make it that night, so we, we performed on the main stage. Yeah, I think it was the Dixie Hummingbirds got yeah. held up somewhere, didn't they? And, so, uh, and, and you got your chance, and you, and you rocked the festival, so you're back this year. But busking is kind of what you do. That's how it starts, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, we started on the street corner playing music and entertaining people that way. And Where was this? Was this? Oh, back in the States, yeah. and also in Canada. We played all over the country playing on the corners, but in the past couple of years, we've actually made it in the door of a few locations as well. <laughs> right, okay, good. Well, look, we're going we're gonna to hear you playing now. If, if you can hear any noise in the background, I think you're competing with the Galician Pipe Extravaganza that's just about to start, but we'll give it a go anyway. All good right. to see you. What are you going to play for us? We're going to give you a wagon wheel. Okay, great. <laughs> Can all tap your toe to this. Harmony. very serious about their music you kind of get the impression that they really often don't care if anybody's out there listening they just want to perform they just want to be together making music and that's kind of what we did when we were down uh, our family and others who were with us were there on the coattails of one who loved it and I'm going to tell you he's now in Korea doing the same thing and I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about him in a minute but there's the old Crow Medicine Show. Their idea was Buskin for Fame, and it worked for them. Now, Buskin for Fun, that's what we were doing. We were at, I think we ended up with $50 or so that we let the kids divide. Um, but basically, we were doing it for fun, and certainly our leader was doing it for fun. And here is Buskin in Korea. This is not our leader. This is another. Look and see how much fun he's having. This is a circle show. Can you see? He's entertaining enough that a crowd has formed a circle around him. 
and he is good at entertaining that crowd, at looking at their faces and seeing what they like. Now they're singing with him. You see how he's playing that bass drum and cymbal? Uh, doesn't that look fun? <laughs> really cool how he has a magnaphone as a speaker. Nathan, what were you or who Rodney, was that you? What did you say? Yeah. He uses the my, the the big microphone or magnaphone. Yeah. Yeah, he's using a microphone. Yep. And that's a good idea in a big group. They they try to busk in a place where there's not a lot of background noise or where they think that the background noise made by a lot of people will calm down when they start to play. Sometimes it doesn't work that way, and they have to move to another location. But this guy, of course, he had the audience right in his hand. Now, here's a guy. Before we talk about Benjamin Franklin, who was one of the first American buskers, I wanted to let you know sometime there was another very famous busker was Paul McCartney from the Beatles. And they dropped him off with his guitar to sing. Um, and they filmed him. If you've ever seen the show Give My Regards to Broad Street in 1984 movie, you'll see Paul McCartney is dropped off to busk. And he is playing. And he, here, I'll just read what he said. They just made me up and dropped me off. So I was standing there plunking chords, doing the silly version of the song. No one noticed that it was me. No one wants to look a busker in the eye, of course, because then they get his life story. So they just toss coins and I'd be going yesterday. All oh, my trouble seems so far away. Thank you, sir. So far away. After they did that, I made sure that the money was donated to charity. So a lot of interesting people have done busking. And Benjamin Franklin was one. When he was a little boy is when he was busking. He sang. He wrote red poetry and read other things that he had written. Now his father thought that uh, that was a shameful thing to do and stopped him. He didn't like being stopped. He didn't really care too much about it tarnishing his reputation. And he, But he took the ideas of being able to speak in public the things you felt right into his ideas for free speech when they were uh, writing the Constitution, writing the laws that govern this nation. He got though, many of those ideas from his time as a young busker. Now, the final one I wanted to show you, to tell you, is I just got a letter from our friend. Uh, he's 65. He and his wife, he is, was a, um, a pretty important political person here in Kentucky, a state senator, a circuit court judge, but his first call was as a family man, second was a musician, and uh, when he retired, he uh, he and his wife are serving a mission in Seoul, Korea. They've been there, um, I don't know, six weeks, something like that. He doesn't know a whole lot of Korean yet, but you know, it doesn't even matter because, you, as you'll see, music is a universal language. Here's what he just wrote. So they finished up what they were doing in the morning and the wife goes in to work on genealogy while I, and here's, I'm going to read what he says. While I go to the pagoda at the local market with my ukulele, my fan base of about a half dozen or, or to a dozen old harmonies are there. And as I approach one or the other of them, pat the floor next to where they're sitting and say, sit here. They love when I play a song they're familiar with. And sometimes they sing along and laugh and clap. I've discovered You Are My Sunshine is an internationally recognized song along with my old Kentucky home. They are familiar with a surprising number of the hymns that I sing, and they love it when I sing in Korea. In parentheses, he says, we sing a hymn in Korean every day in the office to start the day with a hymn and a prayer, followed by scripture study and language training. So I'm slowly getting a Korean repertoire. Usually some children will show interest and their parents will push them over to watch the foreigners sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star is recognized, and they all like his little turtle song. They usually go singing along on the bubble, bubble, bubble part, and they always leave looking at me and sticking their fingers in their mouth trying to make the popping sound. It's lots of fun. 
So he's made a lot of friends. The letter I got this week said that he was asked to perform in one of their big neighborhood concerts in Seoul. I don't know if neighborhood's the right word, but it's a concert. They've asked him to sing three songs. He's going to sing You Are My Sunshine, Softly and Tenderly, the, the one the Tabernacle Choir sings, and Hard Times, which is an old uh, slave song. And so I could add another one with this busking for money, busking for fame, busking for fun. Now I could say busking for converts. Um, there's a man who is not afraid to, and I'm telling you, he would, he would sing on a street corner all day long, even if no one was there, because it, he just absolutely loves it. So now, what do you think of busking? What do you have you ever, have you had experience with street musicians? Anyone? Um, it's been a while, but I think I've had a few, and I've always enjoyed them. And the past two years, I've learned to enjoy live music much more than radio or recorded music, and so I think it's a really nice treat to have listen to the people play live music. Do you know, Rodney? You have you have really spoken truth. In the old days, the only way you could get music was live musicians. And many of the musicians, I'm trying to think of which composer, it's a romantic or modern composer, who didn't want his music recorded. I think it was John Philip Sousa. Didn't want his music recorded because he said, as soon as you start recording it, then you won't have people sitting out on their porch singing with each other. Because the live music is what he liked the best. I like it the best as well. They don't even have to be great musicians. It's just wonderful having it live from mouth to ear. Um, you'd love it here in the South where there's lots and lots of that. We couldn't find it. The live music. <laughs> What's that? I said it's a live music. It's a live music. You are right. You are right. Excellent. Oh, we didn't do one more. This one is one of my favorites. This is uh, playing for change or street musicians. You're going to see street musicians all over the world in this clip, and uh, I hope you love it. It's like we're paused here for a second. Let's see if we can make this work. Come on. See if we can pull it up again. With the live music thing, um, I lived in Biloxi, Mississippi for a little while. Ah. For seven months, actually, for military. And um, there was this restaurant in Mississippi called The Shed. Oh, I want you to keep talking. I just can't make it stop now. Hang on. Okay. I'll take this stuff. I'll put this on. Go ahead. Finish your um, Biloxi. There was there's this restaurant that was I can't remember what city it was in. It was a little bit far. It was not in Biloxi. It was kind of a little farther. I think west. I don't remember. Uh -huh. It's been a, a few years. And it was called the Shed. And it was this little restaurant kind of thing that did like um, smoked meats and things like that. It was so good. So, so, so good. And they had tables outside and there was a stage and there was always live music. And then you, there was this little wood platform place where you could go and you could dance. And it was one of the most fun things ever. Just You're sitting there eating your smoked, smoked meat, listening to live music, and then you can go and dance and have fun after, and it actually, sadly, like, a couple of months after we left, burnt down, oh. and it was absolutely just devastating, because it's the coolest place in the whole world, it's just made out of, like, all kinds of crazy odds and end materials and stuff, but it was, it was an awesome experience to just get to sit and and eat and listen to that live music. You know, you're right, and I bet, I'll bet i bet you that they, the music popped up somewhere else. Whether they rebuilt the restaurant or not, I don't know, but the music will pop up somewhere else. And it is fun. It doesn't take very long before you're just not shy about standing up and dancing, right? 
or if you had an instrument to just join them, stand up and join them because the feeling is so relaxed and non-judgmental and it's just not, there's no tension there. Uh, we did once at the Penn Station, Bethany, is it Penn Station, the store? No, 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 the, at the outhouse blowout <laughs> on the porch at the outhouse blowout. And, you know, we weren't really very good. <laughs> and they eventually would have much better artists there. But they loved us anyway because they didn't really care. They just liked it being live and to have somebody there. So I think this is working now. Stand by me, playing for change. No matter where you go in your life, at some point you're going to need somebody to stand by you. Oh yeah, oh my job, stand by me, no matter who you are, no matter where you go, in life, you gon' need somebody. Send by you No matter how much money you got All the friends you got You gon' need Somebody To stand by you When the night has come And the land is dark and that moon is the only light we see. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't keep one here just as long as your people come and stay by me. And darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand, oh, stand, 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 come on, stand by me, yeah.
So tell me what you thought of that. That was so cool. What did All you All those different instruments. Like the washboard, loved that. Yes. It was so cool seeing all the different countries, too. Yes. They don't seem so far apart, do they? When they can sing together like that? Not at all. They seem so close. And uh, in our world where there are so many divisions and there are people in powerful positions that are encouraging divisiveness, um, this people who want to uh, play for change are doing a good thing. And uh, music helps. Is I don't know how you could have gotten people from all those countries. There must have been a dozen countries all together to do one thing so perfectly in unison if it wasn't for music. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to end on street musicians for this year as far as lessons go. To show you that you, we may never be a Bach. We may never, we will, I will never be a Bach. Maybe one of you will, but maybe not. But we can all participate in music and make the world a better place. And this is one um, example of people who have done just that. So our gospel principle relates to this parable. You know the parable of the talents. He gave one five the... Um, the man who is traveling gave one man five talents, another two, and another one, and then they all took their journey. He that received five talents went and traded and got another five talents. He that had two talents also made good on his two and ended up with two more. The one that received one went and digged a hole and hid it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came back and reckoned with them. And reckoned is a good word. Uh, he he wanted them to explain themselves. What have you done with what you have? And he that received five talents brought his other five and said, I have ten. And the Lord said, you've done good. You're a faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few talents. Now I'm going to make you a ruler over many things and you'll have joy. The man who received two talents brought him his other two talents, reckoned with him and showed him what he had done. And he called him a good and faithful servant and, and promised him that he would feel joy. Then the one who received one talent came and said, I knew that thou art a hard man and I was afraid. And so I went and hid my talent, but I haven't lost it. I still have my one. And the Lord said that he's a slothful servant. And, uh, he took the talent away and gave it to the one who had ten. And unto every one that hath been given, he'll have an abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, how does, how does this parable relate to these street musicians that you've seen? one that you may felt a little close to. I certainly think of our friend Dan, who is in South Korea. I think he's been given five talents, and actually I'll have to tell you that he's not a fabulous singer. He works very, very um, well. What part of South Korea? Seoul. He's in Seoul. Oh, that's my cousin is a in a mission in Seoul, South Korea. Well, these uh, elder and sister Kelly are working in the mission home there. They're... Uh, uh, so he, they get to know a lot of the missionaries. What is your cousin's name, or your? Um, her name is Sister Zendel. Sister Zendel. Well, I will I will mention that to him because I'm certainly telling him um, that because of him, this lesson meant a lot more to me. Uh -huh. Um. So what do you think? How does this parable relate to these street musicians? I like to think that these people, they're um, not even, uh, only using the talents that they have, 
to better themselves but to better others. When I think anything that you're willing to share, even if it's not very good, like I have a dear friend who he's not a very good singer and he's been working really, really hard on it. In fact, before he told people told him that he couldn't even hold a tune. Like if yeah. Mm -hmm. And um he took some voice lessons and has just been working really hard at it and has been doing performances even though he's not very good. He's taking choir this coming year because he just loves music so much that he's just willing to better himself and keep sharing even if it's not good because to me or you or someone who's to ourselves or to someone who's really good we may not seem good but to those people who aren't as good or maybe those people who are just looking to feel that that fulfillment speaks more than anything that you could even imagine I think that's right I think that's right when I think of when this man went around the world I don't know how he chose who would be in that uh, music video stand stand by me but he probably picked those who had already been sharing their talents for a long time like your friend like our friend they were so used to sharing their talent with others that when they were asked would you like to participate in this they already were ready to participate um, another person would oh yes I have this little talent let me go find it first of all and bury it in a hole and dust it off and and try to make it work and by then the man asking for the opportunity is gone you think now is the time for you all to prepare for opportunities that happen as far as music goes and uh, um, I think all of you must have. I, I'm amazed at how many of you in your your very first introductory paragraphs wanted to. Many of you love this music already, classical music. Others wanted to love it. They wanted to learn enough about it that it would change their taste, change the way they viewed that music. I hope that has happened. I hope that has happened that this year. Um, but uh, certainly... I definitely want to learn to play romantic era music more awesome. than the piano. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me make sure that I haven't skipped anything. That's my favorite era of music is the romantic video. There are more composers in that era. And uh, next week we're going to be talking about, about this a little bit more. But let me remind you why the romantic era was so fabulous. In the Baroque and the classical era, especially the beginning of the classical era and before that, people wrote music on assignment. They were hired by the church for a, to write a certain kind of music for a certain kind of performance, whether it was in church or government or whatever. And uh, Bach had to write what they asked him to write. And Mozart had to write what they asked him to write. And, and the other great composers in the Baroque in the early classical era. By the time the Romantic era came along, freedom was... People were already taking, uh, shrugging the shackles of oppression that had that ruled Europe forever, and uh, they started they started to write what they wanted to write. And they said, "We don't care if we don't get paid. If I can't get a job composing music, like I can't get a job at a newspaper, which is what they were like, was a journalist writing a newspaper article. I'll write what I want." And they came up with the music that you love, which is music of the heart music that expressed their depression or their excitement or their love of country. A lot of patriotic songs were written in the Romantic era. But almost all of the songs, that's what made the Romantic era, is people were writing what they wanted to write, and some didn't make a lot of money, and some were fabulously wealthy. Because now audiences, they could, they could write, and an audience could pay them directly. And so the Romantic era has all that kind of music that is from the heart. I love Baroque and classical music as well. But when I need to cry a bit, I turn on a piece of Romantic music. And I don't mean Romantic music. I mean from the Romantic era because it will speak. It will speak to those emotions. So I hope that you do learn.
to play more romantic music and learn to identify it because boy I'll tell you it's romantic music you find it all over the place in commercials and uh, grocery store music or elevator music and uh, bumper music on radio it's all over the place. Uh, you know the song Homeward Bound oh yeah oh is that beautiful I, I consider that a romantic music because that, it tells a story it definitely speaks to the heart doesn't it I love that one too I I have kids that have left home and so it means to me something different than it did when I was your age so well we're about done uh, the two assignments are a word study on talent or an eye search paper on busking if you want to know more about busking if you look on the internet you can google it. it'll give you eight steps to learning how to busk to become a street musician there are other uh, tutorials on learning how to do that and gathering up enough courage to actually do it I'll have to say now this is funny um, our daughter was it our youngest daughter was at BYU and when our friends went on their mission they went to the MTC in Provo and they don't the senior couples aren't as regimented for 20 hours they let them sleep for and work 20 when you're a young missionary but when you're a senior couple you do what you need to do and then you're free for the rest of the day and so he he uh, went to the music department and um, talked them into letting him check out an upright bass like I have in my living room a big upright bass and uh, I was going to be there because we had a grandson being born. This was just a month ago. And he had arranged for us to street music, uh, play some music right there on the quad between the music building and the uh, student union building. What is it called? Wilkinson. The Wilkinson Center, right. Right there on the plaza. Right there on the contra. Now, we've been doing this for five, six, seven, eight years. And I still hate the thoughts of going to do this. After we get started, I like it, but I am still terrified. So we're going through the, the music building from the other side, and you remember that it's a maze down there. You can't find anything, and we were totally lost. We're trying to find where these rows and rows of bases were so we could pick one out, and we couldn't find it. So he opens the door to the practice room, which is sacred. You don't do that. There are people in there who are practicing, but he opens the door, and there's a girl in there playing her violin, and he says, we need to know where this these big these instrument room this the instrument room is swinging and uh, she came out and tried to explain it you go right and then left and pass three doors and up and blah 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 and there's no way we could follow her direction so she just said I'll come and show you and as we're walking down the hall he is talking to her about joining us out on the quad now she's not a bluegrass musician she is getting a uh, bachelor's degree in violin performance but by the time we get to the bass room the instrument room she is she says I will come and so she shows up out there and she said I've never played bluegrass I've always wanted to but you know without music I don't really know what to do or to just play without any music because of course you know a lot of street musicians don't use any music but I'm telling you after one song she was right in doing the little um, parts in between phrases it was just amazing what she would do and another kid from um Cincinnati stopped with his guitar his new roommate's guitar we had five or six people different people stop and sing with us or they had instruments strapped to their back and we for two hours we just played solid and it was sometimes we had a little crowd around us sometimes we were there by ourselves nobody gave us any money because it's Utah <laughs> nobody gives anyone you know money for nothing but uh, it was it was a lot of fun and now our daughter and two of these kids who met that day including the girl um, are Facebook friends and they have gotten together every Thursday about every Thursday and they do the same thing right there on right in public they're learning songs they've met each other they're just getting to know each other and trading off songs they've made playlists on YouTube so they can become familiar with each other's songs and they plan to uh, they're off for the summers now, but they're planning to get back together at the end of the year. And that happens just from street being a street musician. It's amazing you can how how you can meet people just doing fun stuff like that. So if anybody wants to do that, if any of you all are going to BYU and you play an instrument, um, just let me know and I'll put you in contact with this little Buskin group that uh, sure has a lot of fun. And it was all started from this missionary at the MTC who now is in Seoul, Korea, doing the same thing. Oh, I was going to read one more part of his, his second letter. 
see. Um, oh, oh, let's see. Oh, okay. This is how he's able to use his talent, too. In priesthood, they asked one of the deacons to lead the music, and he was clearly not comfortable or confident in his performance, but he did it. When we broke up into our priesthood groups, I told the young men's president that I loved music, and I would be glad to give the ironic priesthood boys a workshop on conducting. And he said, the magic words, do you play the guitar? And of course, he plays guitar fabulously. And he said, I've got a teacher's quorum full of musicians, and they want to start up a musical group. Can you help? I'm thinking to myself, whoa, ho, ho. I even found out the bishop makes ukuleles, and one of the counselors in the Relief Society is working on her doctorate in traditional Korean and folk and roots music and is interested in all the old-time roots music. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> now, that's just like the Lord coming back and saying, because you've worked so hard on this musical talent, because you've been a street musician and you have no shyness about performing in a strange public place when you don't even know the language, I'm giving you this opportunity of a whole group of teachers, of boys, uh, what, 14, 13, 14 and 15 years old, who want guitars. The bishop makes a ukulele for each one. I, it's just a great blessing to him. And so his yoo-hoo is with exclamation points off to the wazoo. Well, you all are wonderful. Any comments before we close? So just a little bit yeah. with the guitar thing. I have a... A boy in my choir class right now who's a Thai exchange student and he's been here for the year from Thailand mm -hmm. and he's so funny and fun and he is so good at playing the guitar I thought I could play the guitar but he knows so the scale on a piece of music like that you would read on the piano he can play the single string on the on the guitar as if it's almost a piano. He wow. knows where each note is with the finger placement. Wow. And so he plays all the time for our concerts and stuff. And it's so awesome. And he, he came and someone was like, you're so good at guitar. I wish I knew how to play. He's like, I thought everyone knew how to play the guitar. <laughs> and that, that was pretty funny. That is cool. Well, you know, I wish we were all here together and everyone had brought their guitars or whatever instrument. It would have been fun to have a little jam session right here, and then we just step out front on our front porch. I don't know if you can buy a house in Kentucky that doesn't have a front porch. Um, I, I live in South. Um, uh, too bad. All right. Well, I'm going to...